Hello there ladies and gentlemen, no variations there upon. It's a very rainy day here in Brum, typical English summer weather, even though it's technically coming into autumn now. Today I've got a very special build in that we're going to be doing some magic. Real magic. Well, real magic is real magic. Real magic is pretend magic. Real magic is science, of course. So we're going to be making a bowl out of paper, ordinary paper that you put in your printer, and it's going to be both waterproof and fireproof using nothing more than the paper. So how are we going to do that? Well, first, you take a square of paper, and it has to be a square. This is ordinary printer paper that I've cut out into a rough square shape. If you want to make sure it's a perfect square, fold the two corners together, and then any overlap, this little bit here is overlapping, slice that off with a pair of scissors. Then you end up with something that's a perfect square. Size of the square doesn't matter, as long as it's a square. The bigger the square, uh, the bigger the bowl that you're gonna make. This is gonna be a very small bowl because it's only 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Okay, so you have your square of paper. What's the first thing you gotta do? First thing is going to be to fold all the corners down into the very center. And the easiest way to do that is to first fold the paper in half like this. But before you fold all the way, just press the corners in. And then you know that those two points are exactly halfway along, you do the same the other side. So you've got four points exactly in quarters and then you know if you fold down a triangle with those two folds at each, each corner the point is going to go directly in the centre. And this is where you find out how perfect your square really was because if it's not a perfect square they don't meet in the centre. So there we are. All sides folded up into a square with the corners pointing into the centre. Now we fold it into thirds. So we fold this half down so we've got a third of us there and the edge of this fold needs to touch the centre. We do the same the other side. Now it's folded into three parts. Open these out again. These bits will come up, fold them back down. So now you've got the square with two lateral folds in it, rotate it 90 degrees, do the same again. Now this time when you unfold it, allow those bits to fold out and open it out all the way because now you've got a square section in the middle, a small square, that's going to be the base of the bowl and these bits are going to be the sides. So these sides with the flap still down, you can fold those up something like that and now I'm going to ask editor Bridget to pause this in a second and show graphically what I'm going to talk about because this can, can get a little bit complicated see these sections here this square square bit that has to be folded so that it becomes a triangle with this tip touching the line down here so what we want is basically a little tuck that goes underneath so, Editor Bridget, if you could freeze this and show what I'm talking about. Editor Bridget here, and what Crafting Bridget was going on about, rather unsuccessfully, is that the fold that you need to make should fall between the two walls that are going to make up the sides of the bowl. So, you'll have this section here, and this section here, are going to be the two walls. And this square here is going to be the bit that needs folding in, such that it creates a little triangle of paper that's going to sit underneath one of the top walls. So what we need to do is take this top corner of the top here and fold it to the fold of the top wall so it needs to go in this direction and that will form a little triangle of paper that will sit underneath that flap that's sticking up at the top. With these corners folded across there and we want to put the triangle flap back down over the top of them. It's like, you know when you pack in a box and you uh, fold those uh, the flaps over so they overlap each other and prevents everything from falling out without putting tape across it. That's basically what we're doing with the paper here. Then we have a small paper bowl. It's more of the box, but it does the same job. And because of the way it's been folded with everything overlapping in the corners, this should actually now be waterproof. 
and allow me to demonstrate. So as you can see I can run water directly into the box and move it around, slosh it around. It doesn't affect the shape of the box or uh, drip through in any way. And the bit that you've all been waiting for, the fire. You'll see it will start to discolour on the bottom but that's actually just soot from the flame. I think it's actually burning and I can demonstrate that if I wipe it you'll see it will start to come off because it's just soot not actually a burn on the paper. And there we have it. Paper bowls are both waterproof and fireproof. Now the reason this works isn't because of any magic, it's because of science. The water can't leak out because of the degree of folding around the corner so water can't get through. So if the tension's too great, so the water absorbs into the paper, it just can't get out. The reason then that fire won't burn it is because paper, if memory serves correctly, has a combustion temperature of about 350 degrees C, somewhere around there. Water boils off at 100 degrees C, so as long as the paper's got any water inside it, it doesn't even have to be wet as long as there's water inside, the paper can never exceed 100 degrees C because the water's got to boil off first. So as long as there's water there, the paper can never reach a temperature in which it can combust. If you're going to try this at home however, and you're a child, that is anyone who is old, young enough to still be living with their parents, say in my parents house, then make sure you have an adult with you when you use the fire, because fire, hot, burn. Even if you're confident this is going to work, make sure you have adult supervision and even if you're an adult, make sure you've got a place to throw the paper if it does catch on fire because there is a chance that the corners, without the chance of touching the water, will combust. Make sure you have something there that you can dispose of the paper if it does catch fire and you don't burn yourself. Okay, safety information over. But a nice easy build, the, even if you don't use the water on fire, the origami little bowls are really fun to make. I've made quite a few. Mary, please shut up.